So I'm Andrew Cordy, Indiana University. My real job is University Information Security Officer for IU, uh, but I'm helping out with this in my spare time. I've got a lot of experience with uh, Kerberos, um, and while this isn't Kerberos, um, it's really come in handy to have that experience. Um, this is going to be your uh, your nth installment of um, what's troubling the Kerberos code in Lustre these days. Uh, so um, you know, we got a little bit of skew on the table there. Sorry about that. For the uh, shared for for the UID mapping code, um, we were looking at doing something different than Kerberos for. Uh, authentication and encryption. Um, we don't want to replace or change any of the Kerberos code. Uh, we want to uh, add an alternative using the GSS API as a, uh, a genericizing layer um, so that we can just uh, snap in a shared key authentication and encryption system. Uh, as you've heard, uh, the Kerberos code does have issues um, and one thing we would like to do to help with that is um, present a null mechanism uh, for the GSS API uh, that could be used for testing that layer. Um, so we just have a null mechanism that does nothing. It doesn't do any authentication or encryption. It's just a pass through. Um, and so we would develop that along with a uh, null luster security flavor. Um, you heard Daniel talk a little bit about the Kerberos security flavors. Um, this would be just another another one um, in that layer. So then you could write tests, uh, and tests could go against this null mechanism without um, without doing any encryption or, or authentication. And you could look at uh, packets on the wire and and see what's going on. And then the, the, the real code, the shared key code that we, we want to put in place um, consists of two security flavors, one that does authentication only and one that does both authentication and encryption. Um, the uh, authentication code would be, uh, well, both would use the, the Luster uh, or the, the Linux uh, key ring um, and, and crypto API, um, probably defaulting to HMAC uh, SHA-256 for authentication and um, AES integer counter mode for the encryption. Uh, the reason we wanted to go with integer counter mode is that it doesn't require uh, any kind of padding, um, and that seemed like it would be the simplest approach to take at first. Um, I assume using the, the Linux uh, kernel crypto API that um, different Different, out, different cipher algorithms would be uh, possible to select. Okay. So you've already heard about some challenges with Kerberos, and we, we did identify some of those same challenges. Um, first up were some build problems. The code wouldn't build. Um, Luster, uh, Luster master wouldn't build with enable GSS. And uh, we, we actually found some of uh, Thomas's contributions. Um, and uh, we, they, they had been code reviewed, but um, hadn't moved past that. So uh, I just sort of um, implemented the suggestions made uh, by Andreas and others in the, in the code review and got those uh, landed. So it does build now, at least, with enable GSS um, in the Intel tree. Um, the, the biggest problem that we've encountered so far, though, we have not uh, yet resolved, I, I don't think, and that is that there is a direct dependency on Kerberos in a lot of the Lustre code where it doesn't properly go through the abstract, the, the GSS API abstraction layer. So uh, particularly in the GSSD, um, you heard Daniel talking about the, the user space GSSD process that that allows Lustre to interface with um, the the user land Kerberos uh, GSS API and Kerberos code. Um, that's that came over from NFS, 
And um, there are dependencies in there that um, where, where the GSSD makes direct KRB5 calls, um, which is kind of a problem if you're trying to implement some other mechanism than Kerberos. If you're just trying to use straight GSS API and then the GSSD goes and calls a direct Kerberos code, well, maybe you weren't even trying to build Kerberos. So that's a problem, right? So we've, we fixed those, um, but there may be, I'm concerned that there may be others in the code that we're going to find uh, later on. So that, that abstraction is not, was never complete and, that, and needs to be completed. Another thing that we fixed sort of is uh, the Intel uh, build nodes um, that, uh, that do test builds for Garrett. Um, these uh, test nodes were not uh, doing enable GSS, probably because it wouldn't build. So after we got enable GSS to build, we wanted those test nodes to um, build that code and test it. Um, so we worked through getting some dependencies fixed on the nodes. Um, apparently the, the, the patch that, that I landed, um, which I'll talk a little bit, bit about later, um, still has some issues on certain distributions, um, but basically the test nodes now uh, have enabled GSS uh, enabled, so they will exercise that code. Um, th I think this is really important because um, obviously the, the Kerberos code probably worked at some point and has fallen into disrepair, and that may be because there are a lot of folks that are contributing to Lustre that aren't using Kerberos, and maybe they're contributions have had some side effects that have affected the, the Kerberos code and broken it. Um, with the test nodes building with Enable GSS, we can ensure that future contributions won't have these kinds of unintended consequences. Uh, a big uh, challenge that we ran into that I didn't expect was that there are actually um, both user and kernel space mechanisms for, every mechanism is really two mechanisms, a user space and a kernel space mechanism. So the way NFS and, and, and Lustre get around this with Kerberos is, well, MIT and Heimdall already come with a full-fledged GSS API mechanism for Kerberos. And then there is a, uh, in the kernel code for Lustre, there has to be a kind of a stub module uh, a stub mechanism that just handles the, the encryption and authentication and doesn't handle any of the key stuff. Uh, so there actually have to be these two mechanisms and I didn't really anticipate that. For Kerberos, they only had to write the one little stub mechanism for the kernel, but we have to write two. We have to write the user space one as well so those GSSD processes can work. Here is the, the patch that we landed for uh, enable GSS we wanted to make enable GSS be the default if your system had all the dependencies uh, for it. So um, we didn't really change um, anything about the way enable GSS and disable GSS work. They still work the same way. But if you don't specify either one and you do have dependencies on your system that will satisfy GSS, then it, then it will be automatically enabled. If you don't have those dependencies, it, there won't be an error or anything. It just will be silently uh, left disabled. Okay, now there is there are some problems with some distros with this. We found out um, there are some distros that don't come with uh, libkey utils, and currently we're treating libkey utils as a strict dependency for GSS, um, which it could be argued is it's not. And it, it's a requirement to build the the key the key util, but if you don't want that, then I suppose you could build it without, so we need to we need to tease that out still. Oh my! <laughs> Another broken slide here, but the 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 point of that slide was there the the difference between the stripped down GSS API mechanism and the full fledged GSS API mechanism. Uh, the stripped down one, you only have to implement maybe ten or so function calls for GSS API. In the real GSS API, you have to implement like 42. So instead of just having to implement 10 for a, a, a kernel stub, 
uh, we had to implement, uh, we're having to implement 50 or so mechanisms. So uh, basically we've had a lot more work than, than, we, than we thought we would have, but we're, we're plotting through it. Uh, we have the null mechanism complete and we're start work, starting to work on testing of that. We're going to land that as quickly as possible so people can start using it to uh, test the GSS API pathways. Um, we're, we're working on the SKP and SKPI uh, security flavors uh, and mechanism right now. That's still under development. Um, some conclusions that we've had, uh, we, we need, uh, we think uh, the, the documentation of the GSS API code in Luster could maybe be improved a bit. Um, there were some false starts that we had in trying to get that to work and, and trying to play nicely with it. Uh, and, and just the other conclusion we'd have is, you know, there, there are a lot of people working on Kerberos and, and depending on it, it seems, I would just encourage everybody to uh, contribute your changes back to, um, uh, to the Luster tree so that, that we can all benefit. And to that end, I'm really looking forward to uh, talking with some of the people that I've seen talk today about Kerberos, because I think there's a lot that I could learn uh, from you, and hopefully you from me too. So, all right, I don't know if I have time for any questions, but, uh, okay. <laughs> All right, perhaps during coffee then? Mr. Sims? Jeepers, why not use Kerberos? Yeah, right. Um, so you should use Kerberos if you can. I'm a big fan of Kerberos. I've used it for a long time and written code for it. Uh, but in some environments, Kerberos might just be too big of a hammer. Uh, maybe you don't want to stand up your own Kerberos infrastructure, or maybe the organization you're with has a Kerberos infrastructure but won't let you use it to put external principles in or, uh, or something like that. So the, the complexity might be too much for you. Um, this is a simple way to uh, set up a secure luster uh, implementation uh, without having to set up all that, uh, that scaffolding. So this is a problem we had at IU actually. We have a big Kerberos infrastructure at IU, but our policies are such that we don't introduce external uh, principles into that realm. And if we're working with, uh, collaborating with, with others at other institutions or organizations that don't have Kerberos either, then we, we're stuck with the choice of sticking them in our realm, which isn't allowed by policy, or running a separate Kerberos realm just for Luster, which you know, we may not have the admin time for or may not want to do. So this is just, the idea is just to be lightweight.